Hey, hey, today we got a tool to use. So if you do not have a grabber, I'll put the Amazon link in the bottom where you can grab one. But if you don't have a grabber, we can use a broomstick, a cane, a walker, anything. I just really want to focus on this straight pole to help us with some arm movement. So for the last 15 days of our progression videos, I'm doing more videos well uh specifics of what people are talking about uh, what our survivors are talking about that we still need help with so um some arm movement some wrist uh, mobility flexion in the shoulders and things like that that's what we're working on today so these videos will be more specific so if you want something in more detail for me to work on for these last 15 days of uh our video progression let me know and i'll make the video uh i'll make it happen so i'm gonna jump right into this but i have a grabber so again, if you don't have a grabber, broomstick, any unweighted stick or straight bar around the house will be a great PVC pipe, anything. If you have one skinny enough, this would be excellent. So I'm going to come down to the floor for video purposes to make sure you see me in the camera. And this first one we're going to work on is overhead raise. A lot of stuff we're doing today are overhead raises. But we're going to drive these arms up over your head. The great thing about doing this, you have this pole, your stronger side is really going to be your assisted. So instead of if in some cases you may have to get assistance to raise the arm up or whatnot this is going to be excellent because our stronger side is going to be our it's going to be our partner today so anyways let's do this take your arms up overhead you're really going to focus oh i'm sorry the first one i want to do is shoulder raise so i want you to focus on just doing a frontal shoulder raise and keeping your arms at shoulder height so frontal shoulder raise shoulder height so imagine my mirror is in front of me so I can make sure my effective side is shoulder height. But you guys are my mirror today. So shoulder height here. Focus, keep your core in tight, pulling the navel up to the spine, driving here. So for our frontal raise, our first exercise, we're going 15 to 20 of these. You already know the secret. I can't count, so I don't know what number I'm on. So we're gonna say almost 15 or close to 15. And our second part, we're now gonna take it up overhead. So I'm gonna actually sit down for this part, and I'm gonna utilize the wall because I want you to utilize the wall as a guide and to really help you get that stretch and get in that arm up overhead, especially those of you that are still dealing with the super tight scapula and not have a full range of moment, movement, this will help us in this situation. And as I'm taking this up over my head, what I'm doing is I'm taking my wrist east and west to really stretch out, get a good deep stretch in my rhomboid, scapula, everything's going on up here in these shoulders. We get a good deep stretch. Actually, you'll actually feel it going all the way down to your latissimus dorsi, so your lat muscles. So we call it your back wings. So I really want you to focus on driving the arms all the way back to the wall. Take your time, bringing it right back down. So our overhead raise against the wall is going to be our second exercise. And again, we're going 15 to 20 of these. Taking in consideration if you're in a situation that your fingers don't quite open up on its own and you can't grasp a bar a bar or grasp anything so after we work to we can do one thing if you're still close fisted pry those fingers open which i got plenty of videos showing you how to pry the fingers open so act as if i pried the finger open uh, fingers open and i take this i'm gonna wrap each finger around and what i would do is i would generally take a Ace bandage, something with some stretch. Or if I had on the long sock, I would actually take my sock off because I always like to show y'all how to do these things. But I could take my a long sock, something with some stretch, t-shirt or something, but a sock would be better. Wrap this around and just kind of stuff it in to really help me grasp onto this pole. So therefore, that's going to help with your grip. And then we're going back to taking it overhead. And as I'm doing this, I try to pay attention to, to all body parts. So as my feet, I want to focus on making sure my feet are dorsiflex, toes pointed towards my face. So therefore, I don't want them just to drop to the side or if you still focus on, I mean, still deal with drop, but try to control everything as we're working. So I know it's hard, but 
because you're trying to focus on doing this. But if you can't pay attention to focus on, hey, let's look at posture, um, having correct posture when we're doing these things. So look at the feet, pulling them in. So yeah, y'all gonna be tired because you work in overtime trying to do this. So act as if I did my 15 to 20 of these overhead because then we're turning around and I'm coming to the floor now. So as I'm coming to the floor, this is one of my favorite ones. I know you guys have seen this in a few of my videos that like I'm lying in a bed. So this is one of the uh, exercises that really got my hand to open up on its own. But I would assist it with my stronger side. Move this out the way. Assist it with my stronger side if I'm pulling it up overhead. And this is really, I would get it here until I continue to focus, focus, focus. And then when it was like, oh, thank you, Jesus, my hand open. So another great thing is to that once you get up here and kind of help it guide itself without slapping yourself in the face, because I've done that plenty of times when my, I didn't have control of the hand. Put it out here. You're able to do it with your stronger side and your non-effective side. So your brain recognizes that it's actually over here opening and the brain says, hey, that side is opening up. What's going on over here with this effective side? I know we're supposed to open up as well. So we do one of these things to help us. So the great thing about that is so we have that pole that we can focus on and get those arms back, 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 back. Definitely going to be a different feeling than being uh, seated and raising these up over your head. So the great thing about something like when you're lying down, kind of, I believe the word is overtoneness or something. It's a, it's a few words for this for when basically you're trying to do something and you're trying to focus so much, another body part, say for instance, if I was standing up in a while, if I was trying to do things when I didn't have my function and feeling and mobility back, I try to do stuff with my hand, my toes would curl up and I would just have all these funky things happening to the body. So the great thing about lying down, it kind of relaxes your mind and your brain and relaxes your body. So therefore, as we're doing this one thing, it, it's helping us to maneuver in those ways a lot easier without everything else firing and kicking in. So I can straighten these legs out. So you can have the legs straight or you can have them bent. And when you're doing this overhead, I want you to actually allow that arm to rest back here as such. So therefore, we really get the benefit of stretching that scapular out. And we're coming back up. So my 15 to 20 there. And now we're going to do some unilateral movements. I believe that's the word I want. Yes, we are. So single arm, really focus it on. So act as if I still have my ace bandage or my um, sock, keeping my uh, wrist tight to help me out here. And I'm going to take the arm laterally out to the side like a windmill type of situation here. And make sure you focus to watch it. So this right here is great for the wrist because I couldn't just leave the wrist down here. I had to focus on pushing that elbow out and straightening the arm. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing the elbow away from me. So therefore I can actually make sure we get it straight and driving it back down. And this is a double whammy because you're trying to squeeze that grip and move this arm at the same time. Yeah, we got a lot going on with this, but y'all got this. Let's say, for instance, if you had the maybe cane in your hand, you might have to go a little higher because you might have the, uh, what is it, the feet of the cane that might be in the way, so you probably can't slide it across the floor. So just we just make adjustments when needed, basically. So we have our side lateral raises. That's going to be 15 as well. And I'm still working on shoulder height here. And I'm going to challenge you after our shoulder height as to really take this. I'm going to call this a unilateral windmill. So say if I'm going partially all the way around. And baby, when I say I feel this now, how tight that is. So it's not as bad. Mine might be a little more because I just worked out. I did some overhead presses. So yeah, I'm feeling all that right up in here. All up in here, baby. I'm feeling that. So we're going with, so again, for this motion here, I want to have you shoulder height. Or shoulder, yeah, that is shoulder height. And driving it all the way back up and around. So we're going to call that our 
What did I say? I forgot what I said. Something windmill. I'm going to call it our unilateral windmill. So I'm not having you go all the way back down. If you want to challenge yourself, you can take it all the way back down. Definitely a big challenge. It's almost, to me, it kind of feel like it gives you a rest taking it all the way back down versus keeping it shoulder height and back down. So I was challenging myself a little more with keeping it shoulder height and back down. So because it keeps the tension on that scapula the entire time versus if you come all the way back down, it releases that tension in that shoulder and allows you to reset. So we have 15 of those. And because y'all always tell me to challenge y'all, turn it up a notch, guess what we gonna do? If y'all could do all that, which I know you can, of course with this, we gonna use this and do some real workouts. So we gonna do a sit up. So the great thing is you have the momentum from your arms and you can use this while we push up against the wall if you need it to help you push forward to lean up. So that's what we go up for, y'all. Let me scoot over to make sure I hit this wall. And arms could go here. That might hurt y'all. If you tight here, it could come here from the chest or from the stomach area. But we're using the arms as momentum. Oh, oh I'm too close to the wall. Sorry. Coming on up. Bring those arms all the way back, y'all. We're really trying to work on getting flexibility and motion in our shoulders. So make sure you take them arms all the way up. Pull those arms out east and west. That's giving you the momentum. Going this way and this way. Giving you the momentum to stretch it out. And I'm going to turn around, y'all. So y'all can see what I'm doing. Here. And because I always think of extra things to give us, to challenge us. When I was trying to show you how I was pulling east and west. Guess what our other exercise is going to be? Drive, 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 down to the floor. Oh, yeah, baby, now we work. Take it over to the opposite side. And it may be safer for you to do this against the wall versus just sitting free like I'm doing. But now this is, this will be called a 180 <laughs> windmill. Always making something up. Hopefully, I remember this when I write these down. 180 with me. The other one was a. What did I say? A, I don't know what I said. Single with me or unilateral with me. Whatever the case may be. So we got our. I'm going for 20 sit ups. 20 sit ups here. And then we have our 180 circle with me. That's where we're going side to side. All right. I love y'all. Oh, I think I forgot. I did forget something. I wanted to challenge y'all with another one. I'm tripping. We ain't done yet. It's the, uh, wanted you to focus on the single arm elbow extension. So you go this way. So as you're sitting here, the arm is straight. Bend up 90 degrees. And really focus on keeping that grip closed to control your wrist from swinging back and forth. So this is going to help strengthen that wrist as well. Back 90. Bam, 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 bam. And back down. We're adding that in as well. That's 15 of those. And now I'm done with y'all. So I'll put the link for the Amazon for this. But the broom stick, lightweight stick in the house, something with a straight, a cane or something with a straight handle that you can really focus on helping to assist that affect your arm and get some movement in it. He, oh, wait, see, I keep forgetting everything. And if you do have this grabber, why not use the grabber? We can use this grabber to work those fingers. So let's put this over here. And I always got to work on to put my fingers in the proper place here. Because honestly, I still don't have all of the 100% uh, filling in this left in my fingers. Oh, see, now my hand's tired. So in this fingers, there we go. Got to get it together. So even, even though I can maneuver my body and do everything, as survivors, we still got to work. With, so that's why these progression videos are great. 
as I'm showing you, I do the exercises. It's good, and I need to do these exercises so therefore I can get this hand and these fingers to move as fluid as my non-affected side. So you can just be as simple as, hey, let me see if I can grab my toe, you know, things like that. And doing something as specific as trying to grab a toe is going to really work the, um, what I'm saying, your uh, wrist strength because you'll have to turn it certain ways and make sure the fingers, which my pinky ain't doing that right now, make sure the fingers are completely, there we go, are completely squeezing. So therefore we can actually perform the activity correctly. So this works wonders and um, multiple things. That's why I like it. I'm a cane or broom, but for retrospect, whatever you have around the house, it works. But this is just a great exercise all to, all the way together. And I bought the ones that have two of them in there. So you can have this going. You could, if I had the other one in my hand, we could be doing a battle left, right, left, right, left, right, just to get some work in. So all these things we utilize. I like to make fun out of our exercises so it doesn't seem like we're just working all the time. So we can make fun out of everything. Throw some music. I already tell y'all, do anything to dance. So. I appreciate y'all. Let me know how this works for you and I'll talk to y'all tomorrow.